hi all so this is a continuation of the general examination video that i had done previously so here in this video we will be discussing about the vital signs so which are the vital signs it is pulse blood pressure respiration and temperature so the must know questions here are definition of pulse what is meant by pulse pulse arterial pulse is a pressure wave that is transmitted along the systemic arteries when blood is pumped into an already filled aorta during systole see we all know what pulse is but when we are asked to define it we'll find it difficult so what is pulse it is a pressure wave that is transmitted along the systemic arteries when blood is pumped into an already filled aorta during systole okay so there are different characteristics that you have to mention about pulse first that it is a rate rhythm volume character vessel wall thickening radio femoral delay and peripheral pulsations so we'll see each one by one so in general for examining pulse there is a radial pulse the position is like this the arm of the patient should be in a semi flexed or semi prone position and we have to palpate the radial pulse using our middle three fingers pressing the radial pulse against the radial styloid okay so you have to use these three fingers that is the index middle and ring finger in such a way that the index finger is more proximal that means towards the heart okay so this is how you have to palpate for the radial artery remember the patient's hand should be in a semi flexed semi prone position it should be well supported and you have to uh, palpate it using your middle three fingers index finger which should be proximal okay so we have to find out the rate so to find out the rate the pulse rate should be counted for one full minute so remember to take your watches during your examination because you have to count the pulse for one full minute and then you have to check the rhythm what is meant by rhythm whether the whether there is a regularity with which the beat fo follows another whether the pulse rate is regular or irregular and then you have to find out the volume so you have to note whether the volume is low or high or equal and whether it is equal on both sides okay so that is how you have to check for the rate rhythm and volume these three are usually uh, palpated found out by palpating the radial artery now the next thing is character so to assess the character we have to take a larger artery most preferably the carotid artery so when you palpate for the carotid artery remember you should palpate it using your thumb and remember that the thumb should not cross the neck okay so it should be like this so that the patient's right carotid should be felt with your left hand and vice versa okay so the character studied by the palpation of uh, carotid pulse so the thumb is pressed backwards so what is the where should we check for the carotid pulse at the medial border of sternocleidomastoid at the level of the thyroid cartilage so at the level of the thyroid cartilage on the medial border of sternocleidomastoid we have to check for the carotid pulsations so next we have to find out the condition of vessel wall so to find the condition of vessel wall to know if there is any thickening or not what you have to do is first you have to press the index finger so that the blood flow is obliterated and then you have to milk out any blood that is present using this ring finger that is basically you just uh, you know milk out the blood present using this ring finger and then using the middle finger you roll and see if there is any vessel wall thickening so you the thickening is detected by milking and rolling the artery against a bony prominence and see whether the vessel wall is palpable or not so normally the vessel wall will not be palpable because for normal subjects there is no vessel wall thickening but if there is a vessel wall thickening then when you roll it you can see you can you will feel that the vessel wall is thickened okay so remember you have to obliterate milk out and then roll next is radio femoral delay we have to check for radio femoral delay the name itself tells us what it is so we have to check the radial pulse as well as the femoral pulse simultaneously we check the femoral and the radial pulse simultaneously and check if they are coming simultaneously now if it is not coming simultaneously what does it mean it means that it, it there could be a coarctation of aorta what is meant by coarctation of aorta see here in this baby you can see that there is a small constriction for the aorta so what happens during each systole the blood will flow to the radial artery normally but to the femoral artery it will be delayed 
so there will be a difference in the appearance of radial and the femoral pulsation so that is called radio femoral delay so you have to simultaneously palpate the radial and the femoral artery to know if there is any radio femoral delay and then finally you have to check all the peripheral pulses so what are the different peripheral pulses that you have to check first one is the superficial temporal artery so see this is the point where you have to check for the superficial temporal artery it is felt just in front of the tragus of the ear so this is the tragus and just in front you can feel for the superficial temporal artery pulsations next you have to check for the common carotid artery pulsations and where will you check for that at the medial border of sternocleidomastoid at the level of the thyroid cartilage so this is where you will check for the common carotid artery pulsations and then you have the facial artery where is the facial artery pulsations it is felt at the antero inferior angle of masseter see here against the mandible so see it is it is felt at the antero inferior angle of the masseter muscle against the mandible okay so these are the two points where you have to check for the common carotid and facial artery pulsations moving on you have to check for the brachial artery pulsations so we know that brachial artery pulsations are felt just medial to the biceps tendon so it is felt in the antecubital fossa just medial to the bi, uh, biceps tendon okay so here it will be somewhere here and then you have the femoral artery pulsations which is felt in the groin just below the inguinal ligament right midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis so just below the inguinal ligament midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis you have the femoral artery pulsation so next is the popliteal artery pulsation so to examine for the popliteal artery make sure that the knee is in a semi flex position and then you have to place your finger in the lower part of the popliteal fossa and you have to palpate deeply so see you can see that here we have to insinuate the fingers so that you can feel for the popliteal artery pulsations and finally i've got two more arteries one is the posterior tibial artery which is felt just behind the medial malleolus midway between the medial malleolus and the tendo achilles so see midway between the medial malleolus and the tendo achilles you can find the posterior tibial remember it is always in the medial part right and then you've got the dorsalis pedis pulsations which is felt just lateral to the tendon of the extensor hallucis longus so we know that the extensor hallucis longus is a tendon which uh, which is which is near the big toe right so just lateral to that you can find the dorsalis pedis pulsations which is which can be uh, absent in some of the individuals so that will conclude our peripheral pulsations so see when you report the pulse first of all you have to tell the rate after counting for 1 minute you have to tell the rate of the pulse rhythm whether it's regular or not volume and character whether it's normal you have to know whether there's any vessel wall thickening so find out the condition of the vessel wall find out if there is any radio femoral delay and you have to check all the peripheral pulses and report whether it is felt equally on both sides so all this will come under pulse so next we'll move on to blood pressure again define blood pressure blood pressure is defined as the lateral pressure exerted by a column of blood on the walls of the containing vessel so it is the lateral pressure exerted by the column of blood on the walls of the containing vessel right so again again here you've got some more definitions what is meant by systolic and diastolic blood pressure the maximum pressure exerted during systole is called the systolic pressure and the minimum is called the diastolic pressure so what is what are the normal values systolic pressure in healthy young adults ranges from 100 to 140 mm of mercury and diastolic pressure ranges from 60 to 90 mm of mercury and what is pulse pressure the difference between the systolic and diastolic is called pulse pressure and the normal range is 30 to 60 so these are favorite questions of examiners because once they ask you to define systolic pressure you 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 might find it difficult so see it is a maximum pressure exerted during systole is called systolic blood pressure so now we will see how to assess the blood pressure so we know that the blood pressure is mainly assessed by the instrument called sphygmomanometer okay so there are different types of sphygmomanometer this is called the mercury one and this is the aneroid you also have got the digital bp apparatus so what is the method for taking a manual blood pressure so the first we have to uh, find out the systolic blood pressure using the palpatory method what is meant by palpatory method in this we first palpate for the radial artery okay and then we inflate the cuff so that the rubber bag that we air filled in this rubber bag and at one point you will stop feeling the radial pulse 
at that point what you have to do you have to al almost increase the cuff further and then you start slowly deflating the cuff so now what happens the blood flow through this radial artery will be re-established okay when we inflated the cuff that radial artery was obstructed or it was constricted so we fail to uh, feel for the radial pulse now when we deflate it at one point again the radial pulse will re reappear so that point where the pulse reappeared that is called the systolic blood pressure so the reading in the manometer when the pulse reappears is the systolic pressure by palpatory method okay so that is so so now you've got a value by the palpatory method now we have to confirm it by the auscultatory method how will you do the auscultatory method for that you have to first palpate for the brachial artery and then you have to keep the diaphragm of the stethoscope over that brachial artery pulsation okay so remember when you keep the keep it directly over the brachial artery you're not going to hear anything just keep it over the brachial artery and then you inflate the cuff how much around 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury more than the value that, that you got in the palpatory method so you have to inflate the cuff 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury more than you got in the systolic method so suppose you got it as 100 in the palpatory method here you have to inflate it up to 120 to 130 clear and then you slowly start deflating it okay so when you deflate what happens you will hear a range of sounds starting from a thudding sound you will first hear a thudding sound then there will be a small blowing noise then a softer thud and then there will be this uh, disappearing blowing sound and finally you will there will be no sound okay so this this series of sounds are called the korok cough sounds it is called the korok cough sound so what is happening when you are deflating the cuff the blood flow is being re-established so this re-establishment of blood flow will cause the turbulence of blood flow will cause a series of sounds which are called the Korokov sounds. Okay. So the moment you start hearing that thudding sound or the Korokov sound, that will be your systolic BP. Okay. The pressure at which that first tapping sound or the thudding sound is heard is taken as the systolic pressure, and the pressure at which the sound completely disappears is taken as the diastolic pressure. So remember in both palpatory and auscultatory, we are taking the reading when you are deflating the cuff remember it like that when you are deflating it you are taking the reading okay so this is how you will get the blood pressure so how will you report you have to report it as the bp is this diastolic bar diastolic you have to write the values here millimeters of mercury in the right upper limb and sitting posture remember you have to tell which limb you have taken and in which posture you have taken clear so that was about blood pressure now we'll see about respiration in respiration you have to mention about the rate rhythm and type so rate to check the rate you have to make sure that the patient is in a recommend position or in a line down position and then you can in uh, as if you are you can uh, place your hand over the radial pulsation as if you're going to check the pulse but your eyes should be at the abdominal movements okay so you have to count the movements of the abdomen with respiration for full one full minute okay so you you uh, your eyes should be on the abdomen but your hand should be on the radial pulse so that the patient will not be that conscious that you're staring at the abdomen okay so that is how you have to check for the rate and the normal rate is around 12 to 18 per minute then you have to check with the rhythm whether it's regular or not and then you have to check the type type means in males usually it is abdominal thoracic whereas in females it is thoraco abdominal so you have to check that also so that will complete respiration and finally you have to check the temperature so the temperature you can take an oral or a axillary temperature and the normal temperature range that that could be asked that is 97.3 to 98.8 degree fahrenheit and in degree celsius it is 36.3 to 37.1 degree celsius so that, that completes our vital signs which includes pulse blood pressure respiration and temperature thank you